story begins February of 1967. I got drafted in the United States Army. I was 21. We all went into this big room um, where you take the oath of, oath of service. And uh, there was a man standing by a table near the exit with stacks of little books. And as we filed past him, he offered us books. They were Gideon New Testaments with Psalms and Proverbs. And I took one. I wasn't a Christian, but I believed in God. I describe myself as a Romans 1 believer. I mean, I could look up into the heavens and see nature around me and realize that it didn't all create itself. Um, I had nine weeks of basic training and then nine weeks of advanced training in infantry and had 19 days leave. Well, during that leave, uh, before I was shipped to Vietnam, and uh, during the time I visited family and friends and my best friend's mother introduced me to the 91st Psalm. And I read that Psalm and it grabbed a hold of me and wouldn't let go. Um, the 91st Psalm has some amazing statements in it and promises. And um, they stood in juxtaposition to the anxiety and fears that I had because I knew that probably some bad stuff lay ahead. Um, so I, I kept that uh, Gideon New Testament in my breast pocket in Vietnam in a waterproof bag. And whenever I was fearful or, or had some time, I was anxious, I'd take it out, I'd read the 91st Psalm, and it never failed to calm my fears and comfort me. I read it over and over and over again. On the night of January 30th, I was on listening post. Now, at night, whenever we were in perimeter, and defensive perimeter, we sent out listening posts. Three men on a radio from each platoon out, out in front of the perimeter. And it was our job to try to detect enemy infiltration, trying to sneak in at night. A little before midnight, um, I heard the ambush patrol call in. They had a starlight scope. It lights up the night um, with infrared technology, and they were able to see. And uh, I heard them call in whispered tones. They observed a large North Vietnamese force was approaching. They were ambushed out, approaching the perimeter, walking alongside the road. And I believe it went like this, 50, 100, 150, 200, as they, more and more soldiers came into their sight. That was the night of January 30th that the, the ambush was, uh, when they attacked. During the uh, um, brief battle, I was wondering, where is the artillery? Where are, I mean, are the helicopter gunships? Where are the jet fighters? Normally, if a base is under attack, you'd have all those assets would come, immediately come to your aid and start putting ordnance on the enemy positions, and we had none. The next morning, um, we sent out recon patrols, I think three or four recon patrols. So we, uh, Started patrolling that day, and everybody was tired. A major sleep deficit for everyone. And uh, we were in the dense jungle. The jungle there was very dense, and the going was tough. And we were, went right through the middle of this uh, open area. Actually, it was in the center of the open area. It was a shallow pond, and it was dry in the dry season. And a circular pond, and around the pond, was about 25 yards, 25 meters of six inch grass and then dense jungle. We walked right through the middle. The point man descended the slope of the pond, walked through the middle. He ascended the slope on the other side. And a curious thing, one single coil of GI concertina wire on the lip of the pond. I, I remember thinking, what on earth is this wire doing way out here in the middle of nowhere? Major red flag should have been waving. The point man stepped across the wire. I stepped across the wire and then the jungle erupted, and I knew that my time to die had come. Um, I'm firing one grenade after another. The North Mies are firing, and RPG explosions start exploding right in front of me, just a few feet away. And I believe four or five rounds landed right in front of me, any one of them close enough to blow me away, and I felt nothing. No blast, no flying dirt, nothing and the shooting's going on, I'm firing and they're firing out and nothing is hitting me. I realized 
that the 91st Psalm was coming literally true by the mercy and grace of God. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night for the arrow that flieth by day. For he shall give his angels charge him to keep thee in all thy ways. And it, God was granting me a miracle. We searched the bodies. Um, the, one of the soldiers was very young. They drafted them at 15 in North Vietnam, and this young man could have been 15. And he had a wallet in his pocket, uh, and in his wallet was a picture of his mother and sister. They had their arms around each other, smiling. And I realized that we killed him and never see him again or know what happened to him. I just felt tremendous compassion for him because he was young. And it was a great lesson in the futility of war for me. I realized that war is necessary at times, but it's always a terrible thing, the loss of life especially the loss of innocent life. But it was a great lesson for me because later, when I started reading and studying the Bible, it was an example of how to love an enemy. Always in the back of my mind was what happened on January 31st. The fact that I had been, my life had been spared by a miracle. I realized that um, if the 91st Psalm was true in such exact detail, the rest of the Bible had to be true as well. And so, as I read the Bible over a period of time, I became convicted of my sins and uh, pruned sinful behavior out of my life, uh, one branch at a time. And I've tried to live my life by um, the Ten Commandments and the counsel of the Word of God. If I hadn't had that little pocket New Testament, I would have been reading it all those days. And uh, that man that gave his time to be at the induction center in Circus, New York, I give thanks for that man who gave his time. I give thanks for the person that gave the dollar to purchase that Gideon Testament. And I give thanks to uh, our God who's faithful to his word and redeemed my life from destruction by a Red Sea miracle, a life-changing miracle.